Sure, that sounds fine. I should also write this down. I might need this for the uh, test. <clears throat> uh, yes. Yep, yep. Give me one a minute. Let me get my iPad. Oh, wait. I don't think my pen is charged. Okay, well, that's not in the picture. I'll just use Word. <laughs> Actually, I want to put a thing out in Slack of saying, hey, we're doing. That's prep. You could probably even call it that. Uh, um, that's... Honor. Oh, there we go. That's a good one. All right. Well, uh, uh, is he coming or? Yeah, I'm not too sure, but I guess we can start. Okay, all right. So, mm -hmm. and you can hear me okay? Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, boom, 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 boom. okay, I confused all the freshmen with my announcement, but it's all right. <laughs> okay, they'll live. So, Computers can only uh, look at ones and zeros. Uh, yep. You think that's obvious to people, but they seem to forget that that's how computers think. And so if you have a tube and you have, you know, a person over here trying to talk to this person over here, uh, what you have is if these were computers, PC2, PC1, they can only talk in ones and zeros. And people forget that those ones and zeros go in a stream. Mm -hmm. So this guy, if he puts in a tube, and I use golf balls, some people use um, um, ping pong balls, but whatever the metaphor, you know, mm -hmm. you got balls that are colored, and those are usually the ones because they have the presence of electricity and balls that are plain and they're the zeros. So this guy is sending a communication of one, one, zero, zero. Okay. And this guy's mm -hmm. receiving it as one, one, zero, zero, because they come out in the same order that they were transmitted. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yep. Okay. So, we're, so, so long as we're on the same page as that. All right. So clear, clear. All bars. Okay. So what happens is, is that when we see a bunch of, especially kids from New York, when they see a bunch <laughs> of ones and zeros, they lose their minds. They have no idea what's going on. So, and this goes all the way back to uh, Edison. Um, because you know why people you know, well, except for area code, but why telephones only have seven numbers? Why? Because that's all people, the average person can remember. Remember, seven uh, okay, yeah, I remember you said that before. Okay. Yep. So, but we can't memorize this string of ones and zeros. I can, but other people can't. Mm -hmm. So, what we do is we convert those into readable digits.
Okay, so that would be the equivalent of that. That doesn't exactly the math, but so mm -hmm. we, because we can remember 255, 255, 10, 10. That's yep. not a problem for us to remember. But this is 8, 8, 8, 8. So that's 32, a string of 32 ones and zeros, 32 bits long. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's pretty long for us to remember. But as humans, we can remember this. That's mm -hmm. not a big deal for us. Okay, so that's where some, uh, that's where IP addressing comes from. So if we have the number 255, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ones. Okay, because mm -hmm. this is two to the zero and anything raised to the zero power is one, two to the one, so that means two, Two to the two, so two times two is four. Two to the third, which is four times two is eight. Two to the fourth, 16. Two to the fifth, 32. Two to the sixth, 64. 64. Yeah. And two to the seventh, which is 128. You add all these up together, and that equals 254 except the one problem you're missing is what happens if these are all zero, right? Mm -hmm. If those are all zero, well, then you have two, five, or this is two, five, five. Um, when you add all these up, zero adds another one to the digit. So it says you have 256 bits. Oh, okay. Yep. Right. And yeah, you should that makes be familiar sense. with this with uh, video cards. I mean, yep. yeah, we, we haven't had 256 video in like, 20 years, but mm -hmm. um, it's still a very common encoding scheme is 256. So that's mm -hmm. where they get that limit of 256 is one octet. Okay, is 256 bits. That's our limit. That's our human capacity to interpret numbers binarily. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's where all that this is where all IP subnetting comes from. All right. So now what we have to say is when we're trying, so when we're trying to interpret something, we have to convert, let's say 74 into binary because the computer does not understand what 74 is. So to do that, you can either use a calculator. I like to use the Microsoft calculator. It's on here somewhere. One that comes with Windows programmer mode. I know you guys can't see it, but that's all right. I'm just using it because you guys can use your own. And that converts 74 in because I'm not going to do it longhand. You, I showed that in the video and people got confused. So it's 0100 zero, zero, and then 1010. Zero, one, zero. Again, this is 1, 2, Four, uh, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one twenty-eight. So you got sixty-four plus eight plus two, which is equal to seventy-four. Oh, so you're turning on the stuff that that right. rounds up to this, seventy-four. So this oh, okay. is what people understand. Ah, this is what the PC understands mm -hmm. okay so you have to remember that when we're saying 74 we don't mean that we mean this and all the 74 is a representation of what the ones and zeros we are sending to the pc mm -hmm. okay so you have to keep that in mind during this whole subnetting thing is that 74 it, in itself means absolutely nothing okay mm -hmm. all it is is our way of understanding this stream of ones and zeros that's going to the computer. Okay, it's a symbol of representation, right? Yep. Uh, you remember Mr. Yuck? I don't know if you, they still teach that in school. No? Yep. Mm -mm. Okay, well, Mr. Yuck was a very famous marketing thing about poison. You know, so they put Mr. Yuck stickers on everything that was poison. So the thing is, Mr. Yuck itself has no value 
but the representation that something is bad is what, you know, so 74 itself is not the value 74. It's not like I have 74 um, apples. It's not like I have 74 cars. 74 is just the symbol of what is representing by these ones and zeros. Okay. It, it's so we can understand but we really don't care that this, that does not mean 74 is not greater than 75 it's, or 73. It is not that kind of number. It is a representation. I think when I was explaining to Jeremy, um, I told him it was like your last name. 74 is just some guy's name. Oh, that, that's a sports metaphor. If I knew anything about sports, I'd be like, oh yeah, that's Fran Tarkington's number or something. Um, I don't know who's playing nowadays. Um, uh, Warren Moon or somebody. Okay. So uh, that's, so you gotta keep this in mind throughout the whole subnetting thing is that anytime a numerical digit is used, it is only a representative of the ones and zeros that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Cool? Yep. Okay, all right, so we're okay on that part. All right, so now we go back to the little tube again, okay? Now, the thing is, when you're sending this endless stream of ones and zeros, the, this guy at this end needs to know what do these ones and zeros mean, okay? Because mm -hmm. it could mean, it could be a light up a light. It could be the letter E. It could be left arrow, right? He doesn't know what that is. So in networking, what you need to do is have an indicator. And so this stream of ones is what tells this guy, hey, I'm about to give you some information related to networking. And when he reads these ones and zeros, he goes, oh, someone's about to tell me about the NIC card. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that Kind of makes sense? Yep. Okay, because we're about to play with a lot of ones and zeros here, and you got to keep those two elements in mind. Okay. All right. So we have an IP address of 193-244-93-164. Uh, okay. So this address, what, it's, it, what it tells, um, and then we have a subnet mask of 27. So this is telling us that we are trying to connect, e either this is a packet from somewhere or it's going to somewhere. And in this name right here, um, let me get rid of this real quick. So this is, this is somebody's name. I want to send a package to Tom. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, remember our limit is only 255, 255. We can't go beyond that because we don't have any more ones. 255, 255. So we have a finite limit of how many names we can use. Well, as we know from Jamal, from your research, that all black men your age are named Jamal, 95% of them. <laughs> I'd still like to know where you got that from. That was hilarious. But That's anyway, <laughs> uh, we would quickly run out of names because there's 6 billion people and everybody's got three or four devices, you would not have enough IP addressing space to have everyone have a unique IP address. Okay, does that make sense? Yep. Even our social security numbers are being reused. So um, that does not unique enough for us to have a unique name for, we know where that packet's gonna go. So what we introduced in IPv4 was a thing called a subnet mask. 
And then now, instead of this being called Tom, it's now called Tom Smith because we introduced this network mask at the end. And so all we're doing is combining this number here with a subnet mask and 27 means 27 ones and 27 ones tells me this is 255 because that's eight ones, right? Mm -hmm. 255, eight ones again, 255, okay, eight ones. So that's, we're up to 24, 25, 26, 27, so that's three. So that would be what, one or 220 something? Yeah, 224, 224. So by combining this number with this number, we get a unique result that says this IP address belongs to Tom of the family Smith. This is your family name. And this is your, what they used to call your Christian name. I don't know if they call that anymore. But yeah, you got your family name and your Christian name. And by putting those together, now I know Tom Smith is supposed to get this packet, which is enough for us. Well, it isn't enough. That's why now we have IPv6. But at the time, this was enough to be unique that many people said it'd be 20 years. And I think we ran out in about six. Um, but this would be enough for us to move packets around. So part of what we need to do is identify when we put these two pieces together, what result do we have? What kind of information are we provided? And that's where the trick comes in. So let's go back to our IP address, which is 193. And let's just work on 193. Let, let's do that. that let, that'll make things a little bit easier. So 193 in binary is actually 11. Zero, 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 one. And then we knew that from the subnet mask, this was 255, and we know that is one, 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 one. All right. When we do that binary math that I was talking to you about, it's not really math, it, it's, but I learned it as Boolean because it has to do with voltages. So you, when you add two things together, the only time you'll ever get a one is if both inputs are a one. So here we got a one and a one, that produces a one. So it's like zero true and false. one, huh? So it's like true and false, like if it's one, one, true, yes, uh, zero, it's a truth table, zero yes. one, false? Yep, okay. yep, true and false, okay. yeah. I don't know how Shoemaker taught it or Shelly taught it, but- Yeah, that's, yeah. Where I, that's, that's where I learned from, Shoemaker. Okay, good, yep, so- that will be true, true, yeah. There we go. And so we can see from this that this number is the same as the original number because 255 just means everything. It'll duplicate everything that comes of, comes over. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So, so we're good so far? Yep. All right. So if we, now if we do the last piece, the last piece of our original was 164 and uh, it was what, two? 224. Yeah, 224. So now we have 164, which is the same as. One zero, one zero. Zero one zero zero, and we know this is one 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 zero 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 zero. Now from this we do the same thing. We do our math. Okay, but that gives us a whole separate number. Yeah. And so that number equates to what? One twenty eight plus thirty two. One fifty. One sixty. 
160. Okay. I think we'll, well, I'll put it over. Oh, I didn't know you asked me for an answer. I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> oh, no, that's fine. 160. Okay. So this, this is where people get confused because there's no way in the world that this number plus this number will equal this. And if you subtract these two numbers, it will not equal this. And if you multiply these two numbers, it will not equal this. So how is it possible that you put this number and this number together and you end up with this result? That's because these numbers don't mean anything, okay? These are the numbers that mean something because this math is perfectly legit. But these numbers, because they have no numerical value, that's why you come up with this weird symbol and that's when people start getting confused. Okay, so once mm -hmm. you get your mind wrapped around that these numbers are nothing more than a representation of what these ones and zeros look like, um, it becomes a little bit simpler to understand. Does that okay, help? Okay, yeah, yeah, I see, yeah. Okay, all right, so now let's look at a true IP address. So we'll, we'll continue with the same one, 193, and I'll space it out here, dot, 244.93.164, and then we know it's forward slash 27. All right. So the first thing we got to do, well, 27 we know is 255. 255. 255. And what was it? 240? 220. Two two four. Okay. And so we know when this is all ones, nothing changes. So we know the result is going to be one nine three. Again, this is all ones, so nothing will change. Two four four. All ones, so nothing will change. Ninety three. And then we already know the answer because we just combined those. And that is one six zero. All right, this tells us our network or our last name. This is our surname. So this is Smith. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so now we know our network. What we don't know is what is the very first IP address that we can use. And the very first IP address is not zero, does not, is not 160 because that's reserved for the network itself. So our very first one, we just add a one. And so it's 193-244-93-161. That's our very first IP address that we can use in our network. And we call that the first IP. So when we have our first child, we can call him 161, or we, in honor of Jamal, we'll call him Jamal. Okay? Well, we can't call any other child Jamal at this point, because we already used our one slot for Jamal. So the next one's got to be Sally or Jeremy or something. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. But how many names can we use before we get up to our limit? What's our limit? Two five five. Two five five. Okay, so you can you can do some simple math, but really what you're doing is because two two four is one one zero. I'm sorry, one 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 zero 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 zero. What you're doing is you're saying this is part of the surname. So we only have these numbers to play with. If this number is the network. And if we add a one, that's the first IP. We need to know what happens if we want to talk to all kids at once. We get, you know, we, mom has to get on the back porch and say, hey, all you rugrats, get in here, right? Well, we call that the broadcast address. And all we do is we take all these zeros and we flip them to one. Mm. And so now when we bring this down, we know that that is equal to 255. 
right? Because that's eight ones. Mm -hmm. And this is our broadcast. To find our last usable IP, we just subtract one. And so our last usable IP is 254, and that's our last IP. So this one, we add one, that one, we subtract one. So all that work comes down to our network. Everything on our network has to be on the network labeled 193.244.93.160. So any kid with this network will have our last name. Mm -hmm. This is your last name. So if, if we say, hey, we want to talk to every kid with the last name of Smith. Oh, nice. <coughs> we want to talk to every kid with the last name of Smith. Um, we know this means Smith. And this comes in handy for when you're configuring a switch. Because a switch, you'll say, hey, I want all these packets to go to um, like Sanford a specific Hall. computer? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I want all these packets to go to Sanford Hall. <clears throat> and so that's that's the name of the last name. So the network in Sanford, I don't know what it is, but it's got several. But it might be, hey, every computer, and we want all these packets to go to every computer in this one room. So, um, and that's where that comes from. Now, if we want to go to a specific computer in that room, we say, okay, but we... We can only use any PC that uses 161-254. to So any PC that ends with a number in between here, the math will work out that this will always come out as being true. See how our original one at the top here? Yep. So from that one kid's name, and let's say his name is Bob, because why not? From Bob, from just knowing his name, we know he's from the family Smith, and that at most he has, you know what, 90 brothers and sisters? At mm -hmm. most. And then if we want to yell at them all at the same time, we send one message to 255, and every one of them will get the exact same message. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is how IP subnetting works. So now it's your turn. You ready for this? Oh, yay. <laughs> yep. All right, so let's do an easy one. Um, let me find one here. I'm trying to find one that ends right on the dot. That one works. OK. So let me give you an IP address. And oh, Jeremy logged out because he was afraid I was going to call on him. <laughs> So here's an IP address, 180.247.43.236 forward slash 24. Okay, so from this, from this information here alone, what network does this IP address appear on? Mm. So the first thing you look at is here. Mm -hmm. So what is 20, 24 means 24 ones. 24 ones and... So what it, would that be for our subnet mask? Oh, 
we two five five two five five. Wait, make sure we're up to sixteen ones, right? Because this is eight mm -hmm. ones. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we need eight more ones. So two five five, two five five, two five five. So it'd be three, three sets. Yep. And then zero. And yeah. Because we're out of ones. Zero. Yep. Okay. So what happens when all ones is added to this number? Um What's 180 in binary? I don't know. <laughs> 180 is. Ah. Stop that. One, zero. One one zero one zero zero. Okay, now when we add those together, what's going to happen? Would it turn out to 180? Yes, I mean, it, yeah, yes, it will because because when they're all ones, mm -hmm. nothing will change. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this will be 180. So, what number will this be? Uh, 247. 247, okay. And what number will this be? 43. 43. And then here's the big one. What number will this be? Um, there are no ones in this one. So it would just be, would it just be a zero? Yes, it would. Very okay. good. So this is our network ID. Let me just write that down. <laughs> Okay. All right. Now, what's our very first, and we'll call this one, um, I don't know, the Jones family, why not? So what's, what's our very first kid? When we have a kid, what, what is the first number that that kid could be? Um, would, you, would you add a one to? Uh, That's it. You just add a one plus to the one. End. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Now this is making sense. Like when you're doing like, the IPs and stuff. Okay. Until you do it, it's mm. okay. So that's our first IP. Mm -hmm. So what's going to be our broadcast IP? When I got all these kids running around, I just want to send one message to all of them to be at the bus stop by three or something. It'd be 255. It would be 255, yes. Okay, so that's our broadcast. And then, so our last usable IP, if we want to talk to an individual child is? Then if we want to talk to like one person, so it'd be one? Yep, so you subtract one. Okay, yep. Ah. Hmm. So if you go back and look at our original IP address mm -hmm. of 236, it falls between one two. Mm -hmm. and two, five, four. So therefore we extracted all this information by just doing the math here. So mm -hmm. this is our last usable ID, IP. Now this comes important when someone says, hey, I wanna set up a classroom with 30 PCs If you, if you do this, how many IP addresses are you using? We're talking to, to two people? So no, you're, you're, but oh. you've got a range here between one and 254. So um, you're, you're, you're using talking. 255 PCs mm -hmm. or IP addresses to equip 30 PCs with IP addresses. Mm -hmm. You've just wasted over 200 IP addresses because you can't use them with anybody else, right? Because they're part of the yep. Jones family in this case. So that's where you start playing with your um, subnet mask here 
until you're only using about 50 IP addresses. Mm -hmm. And that's where the networking comes in. All right, so that's how you mm -hmm. design your network is all from this, well, it's not even math. It's, you know, it's, it's Boolean addition or truth tables or whatever. It yeah, it's like, it. it's like, it's like, it's like you're just turning like things right. on like true and false. And... and then you're just trying to remember how to do that, but represented by mm -hmm. the decimal notations. Yeah. Because these don't have any meaning. You know, 254 is not a value that's greater than dot one. It's just a different value. There, there is no weight. There's not, because I can only have two PCs on this network and one could be a dot one, the other one could be a dot eight, but that doesn't mean dot eight is accessed any faster or delivered any faster than the dot one. There, there is no inherent value to these. Mm -hmm. There's no number line. It's just an indicator of where that packet is supposed to go. So when it comes okay. to, um, Actually, let's do another one before we get into that. You ready for one now? Yep. All right, I'll do one that's not so easy. Perfect. <laughs> well, if, I, if it was easy, then I could do it. All right, here's one. Two, one, two. Two, three, one. One o two. One five eight. Twenty nine. All right. So what I want you to do is to tell me what is the network. Or what is the last name of this uh, person. So it wouldn't be like the, the the bottom port, yeah. Two five five, two five five. All right, but we got twenty nine ones. This is twenty four. So twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine. So what is that in decimal form? Is that two four four? No. You tell me. I'll write down whatever it is. You tell me. Yeah, is that two four four? I believe I'm doing this correctly. Yeah. Two four four. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, how about if we do two four zero? Okay. New York math, right? New York. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so when we merge these two together now, we know that the network address is going to be 212-231-102 and something. So we got to convert 158 into binary. Mm. Um, I 
I need help. All right. So we add these two numbers together. 158 in binary is this row of ones and zeros. And then mm -hmm. 240 is this row. And we just do the um, Boolean addition here. Zero and a zero is a zero. One false. and a zero is a zero. Zero, zero. True. Or true. False, false. False, false true. true. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we convert that into decimal. It should be 144, I think. And this is our network ID. Yeah, 144. Okay. Now mm -hmm. notice that this looks nothing like the network ID. Mm -hmm. Right? So it, it's one of those things where if you don't do the math, you can't guess at this. If you don't do the math, you're not going to get the right answer. Because mm -hmm. your professor is a real dick and he makes things really close. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right. So if that's our network ID, what's our very first IP address? We know it's going to be 212 231 102 oh, two. And what's going to be our very first IP address? What's the first name we can name our child? Um, you just add one. Okay. So 145. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how do we know what our broadcast address is? And then I'll be 255. Uh, no. Oh, no. Sorry. Uh, 158. Where'd you get 158 from? That's awesome. You're cheating somewhere. Wait a minute. So see these all zeros here? Mm -hmm. We got to flip those all to one and do the math again. So now this will be one, 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 zero. So what does one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero equate to? Fifty-nine. Right, one fifty-nine. So that is our broadcast. So if we want to yell at all the kids at once, even if we don't know their names, we can yell two one two two three one one zero two one fifty-nine. Get in here now, and. All the kids will come around. Mm -hmm. But what is the last named child? We just subtract one. And that gives us our last IP address. So if our first IP address that we can use is 145, and our last IP address that we can use is 158, how many kids can we have in this family? Thirteen, right? Because we can use one four mm -hmm. five, one four six, one four seven, one four eight, one four nine, one five zero, right? So we add them all up, mm -hmm. and that's how many kids we can have. So if we have a classroom of twenty desks, this IP address range is not going to work for us. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's how you do the math. This is where it comes into play with the equipment that we're setting up right now is you have a PC over here and there's a PC over here. And what's your, what's your home PC always? 192.168.1. Whatever. Let's say 12. However, this guy over here is also, 192.168.1.12. Dot one dot 
Mm -hmm. Well, the reason that they can be separated is because you got a switch and a switch. And every PC on this network that starts with 192.168.1, sometimes they end it here, but more and more I've seen home networks end at the uh, 24 mark. They will not even go to the switch. It'll just find the other PC on the network or the cell phone or the whatever is running out there, you know, your cameras, what have you because they're all sharing this IP space. When uh, any of these devices detect this, they say, oh, that could be to me. That's way oversimplified, but that's about how it works. If this 192.168.1.12 wants to talk to this one, it has to go through the switch, which has a different IP address. And let's say 200.200.10.2. Um, and then this one's got a different one of 100.100.10.1. And then from there, they go to a router. And the router, these have to be on the same network. So 10.10.0.1 and 10.10.0.2. .10 so in order for these two to communicate, they have to be on the same network. Mm -hmm. However, this one is separate from this one because they will never talk to each other directly without going through this path. And that's why, the, that's why we were able to expand IPv, IPv4 because we're allowed to have the Smiths in Illinois and the Smiths in New York they're so far apart that we can use the Smith name over again. But the only way that this Smith will know John Smith wants to talk to a different kind of John Smith is if he talks to, you know, McGillicuddy over here. Because he's the one who knows the difference between the two John Smiths. And this is where lab six comes into play. You are configuring this switch to have two computers talk to each other. Is that helpful? Yep. Are you sure? I didn't lose yep. you? I'm, no, I'm just, I'm just tying everything together here and looking okay. at my notes. Uh, you can contact me anytime. But that's essentially what subnetting is about. Mm -hmm. That is why these, these numbers have no meaning. Okay, so don't mm -hmm. try to do math on these numbers. Yes, and the thing is, somebody watching this video is like, well, my buddy taught me this really cool shortcut. Yeah, the shortcuts work great until they don't. <laughs> that's the problem with shortcuts. I, I've always had that issue with math, right? You, you know FOIL, right, in algebra? Mm -hmm. Yep. First, outer, inner, last. Well, that only works if you have two, two binomials. Any other situation, which is almost every other situation, that doesn't work. So <laughs> don't use the shortcuts. Do it the long way, and you'll never get it wrong ever. Okay? Mm. But six is all about teaching the switch and the router well, you don't have a router okay. yet, but you will Wait. soon, is teaching the switch that I want you to talk the two Smiths together, okay? Mm -hmm. That's all it means. Which you could do with a crossover cable. You don't even need a switch, but we're not going to get into that. So, Helpful? All righty, yeah. Well, all right. I'll and post this. Over. I'll post and this out there and and uh, hopefully that'll help some people. All right.